Five years ago, shoppers looking for an inexpensive car could choose from about a dozen models selling for less than $20,000. Now there's only one, the subcompact Mitsubishi Mirage, and there are reports that it will be phased out in 2025. The average car price is now more than $48,000, and buyers are being further squeezed by rising interest rates. It's hitting younger generations particularly hard. Last year, those aged 18 to 39, Generation Z and Millennials, had more than $20 billion in auto loans, more than 90 days overdue. Total outstanding auto loans are nearly $1.6 trillion. Earlier, I spoke with Tom Krischer, who covers the auto industry for the Associated Press. I asked if the era of inexpensive cars is over. There will be some inexpensive SUVs, but um, the cars are cheaper, and uh, those are gradually... They're falling out of favor with uh, buyers, number one, and plus the auto companies don't make nearly as much money on them as they do uh, more expensive SUVs. So the auto companies have gotten out, or a lot of the auto companies have gotten out of the small car business, and it just doesn't have the profit margins. So I think you're correct that uh, we're probably not going to have any or at least very few inexpensive cars for a long time. And not only there are very few inexpensive cars, it seems like at the top end, it's grown. It's not just that cars now cost forty dollars or $50,000, but there are a number of models that are more than $100,000. Yeah, there are 32, according to Cox Automotive, that are over hundred grand. And just five years ago, there were a dozen. Granted, these are, though, a, a small number because they're mostly high-end European luxury models. Of those two things you mentioned at the top, customer demand being uh, lower for small cars and also the, uh, the, the automakers chasing the profit margin, which of those factors is bigger, do you think? It's a good question. Um, I would think it's the shift to SUVs. Uh, Americans, since about 2012, have just started wanting to sit higher in vehicles, and they like the, the utility being able to see sitting higher up in, in an SUV. Um, that kind of started the downfall of cars. The auto companies saw the trend coming, uh, so they started to get out of it because the sales were dropping. It used to be the midsize car was the number one selling non-pickup truck in America. Now the Toyota RAV4 uh, small SUV is the number one selling non-truck in the country. When you go to car dealerships or talk to car shoppers, what do they say about this? There are people who are disappointed. It's tough to afford something, even $20,000. Um, you know, if you put the standard down payment down at 7% interest, which is kind of the average now on a car loan for 60 months, you're, you're going to be paying 375 bucks a month. And for a lot of people, uh, if they make minimum wage or even less, uh, that's pretty expensive. We do have, you know, quite a few other vehicles that have sticker prices starting at under $20,000. But by the time you put on shipping and then any options to them, uh, they all got over except for the Mitsubishi Mirage, which was, I think it had an average selling price of $19,205. Do you think this will spur the growth of not only ride sharing services, but also car sharing services? It's kind of tough to say. I, ride sharing, uh, I think, is going to be still more expensive than owning your own car if you drive it frequently. If you make in infrequent trips, like you, you only have to go to the office two days a week or something, it may be cheaper to go with ride sharing. And then you've got this other wild card out there, uh, autonomous vehicles. Uh, Cruz and Waymo are testing driverless vehicles. And if you don't have to pay the driver, your cost per mile is a whole lot less. So the ride sharing, ride hailing costs can come down. Um, those are still, you know, kind of in the test phase, but San Francisco seems to be, you know, uh, getting quite a few of these rides. A few years ago, there were stories saying that the uh, younger generation was moving away from driving, moving away from cars. Is, is that holding up? Anecdotally, no. Um, I use my own daughter as an example. She has a car and she enjoys being able to drive to her place of employment, park and walk into the door. Um, a lot of younger people, once they get out into the working world, are starting to see that, that it is convenient. And if you don't have good public transit, which a lot of places don't, uh, it's, it's you know, a much better way to get around. You've covered the auto industry for quite a while. If the sedans are going away and it becomes uh, sort of small SUVs become the smallest car that... Uh, uh, the car companies offer. What's lost uh, for American culture and, and for the for car buyers? 
Well, affordability is the, the, the top thing, but you also have fuel economy. An SUV, because it sits higher, it has more wind drag, and you can't defeat the laws of physics. A smaller sedan or even a midsize sedan that sits lower gets way better gas mileage. And people are spending more on gas because they have these SUVs, and uh, cars uh, generally uh, do a better job with that. Is the shift to electric vehicles going to change this or change this dynamic or more sedans uh, going to be in demand then? That's a possibility. Um, it, it may change the affordability uh, issue, too, because if you get a $7,500 tax credit and you buy, say, a Chevrolet Bolt, which I think starts at $26,000, but it can go up, you know, rapidly. So say you pay $30,000 for an electric car, it's really $22,500 because you get a $7,500 tax credit if you make enough money to get that credit. Uh, but that makes it a whole lot more affordable. They say that uh, the prices of batteries and components are gonna come down the more electric cars you build, then the price could even drop further. Tom Krischer, Auto Rider for the Associated Press. Thank you very much. You're quite welcome, John.